All right, guys, what is good? Piston back in one of the videos. So today I'm going to be again reacting to Gary Neville, um, well, his analysis of the Man United centre back partnership uh, to which uh, pair concede the most goals, uh, to which pair concede the less goals as well, to which one uh, who he thinks is the best partnership as well um, in that Man United team. We all know this. For me, it's Eric Bailly. I keep saying it every time, like Eric Bailly and Maguire should be playing together. There's way less um, mistakes between those two whenever they're, they're playing with, with each other as well. I think that Maguire has more um, of a presence. He's more confident as well in, in him going forward as well and trying to create something uh, for the team as well because he can trust um, Eric Baez or to uh, to uh, cover back for him and he's got that re recovery pace as well but anyway I'm going to get the video started but you asked the question about pairings for Manchester United and you go back to the two great pairings that Manchester United have had mm -hmm. for and me the goalkeeper because I've got to include the goalkeeper in this that triangle of goalkeeper and two centre backs are critical of course, for me, um, I was very young. I, I was very young. I was one years old when uh, Michael Bruce and Pallister uh, played uh, together. A funny uh, fun fact: I've, I've actually met uh, Steve Bruce as well. Real nice guy to talk to, you know. A real pleasure as well. Um, but yeah, uh, Steve Bruce and Pallister, uh, they won us our first Premier League uh, title. I'm pretty sure Steve Bruce that uh, that uh, scored the header uh, for us. I think it was against Sheffield Wednesday. But um, yeah, I'm gonna continue. Cool to a team that will win the league. Schmeichel, Bruce and Pallister in the Premier League, 125 games, 2.2 points per game, awesome. 0.73 goals conceded, 59 clean sheets. Nice. And the key one is this. Ver, uh, Van der Sar, Fernand and Vidic for five years, 96 games, 2.2 points per game, so massive. For me, uh, Van der Sar, Ferdinand and Vidic, well, Fer Ferdinand and Vidic for me is the best centre-back partnership um, I've seen in the Premier League. My friend Sule might disagree with that, he might say. Uh, John Terry and uh, Ricardo Carvalho. I, th I think his first name's uh, Ricardo, but is he, he? He's obviously Car Carvalho. I think that they considered about like fourteen goals in the um all five or six season, or is it all four or five season? But for me, I think when I look at a centre back partnership, Rio Ferdinand and Vidic are definitely like my go to guys as well because one guy, Rio Ferdinand, he was like absolutely sublime on the ball, and Vidic was was just a monster. He would just like take shots take people out, the Terminator, Vida, you know, he's from Serbia, he'll effing murder you. That's what we used to say as my United fans, but anyway, I'll continue. Points per game, but again, 0.72. So you could look at this in raw data and you could say to yourself, well, they played in great teams, that's why they won more points. Yes, but if you look at Ferdinand and Vidic, they had a, they had a midfield in front of them of Scholes, Carrick, Giggs and Ronaldo. Yep. It's not really a defender amongst them. Yeah, it's not. And you look at this pair now of Lindelof uh, and McGuire. And not that that's true as well because like back then as well, uh, a CDM wasn't like as as popular as it is right now. Yes, there was great CDMs as well, like a, 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 around that time, Macalessian, uh, Roy Keane as well was, was playing back then too. Patrick Vieira, the, um, he was coming down like to, towards uh, the end of his his career. But again, great great CDMs, you know, um, not as much. Um, uh, CDMs back then as there is right now like right like right now like a CDM is, is a must have in the team because they they, they protect your centre backs or centre halves as what people call them Maguire 51 games with De Gea 1.8 points per game so you could say that's down to the fact they're playing in a weaker team but they can see the goal a game look at that a goal a game conceded that is not for me right sorry guys if, if, if I'm shouting as well because these kind of things do get on my nerves like a goal a game is not good enough come on you 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 play for Man United and you're conceding a goal a game that is that's absolutely ridiculous man it, it should not be happening and like I, 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 and, I, and I hope that Oli can see this as well because like it, it's, it's just a given like everybody knows this right now everybody in the world knows this that our best centre back par partnership is Maguire and Eric Bay. Not, not, not Victor Lindelof. I'm sorry. It's, 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 it's just. It is what it is. The stats speak speak for themselves. The numbers never lie. And they've got Fred and McTominay in front of them. They've got two defensive midfield players sat right in front of them, and they don't move. Sometimes Pogba plays there. Sometimes. But the key thing is at the bottom. Only one of the last twenty Premier League champions has conceded one. Uh, one goal per game or more. And that tells you that this here 
this three of De Gea, Lindelof, Maguire, I don't disclude the full-backs from it because they have to come into it, but if you've got that three absolutely spot on, if you think of Alisson and Van Dijk being the final piece of the jigsaw for Liverpool, if you think of Diaz coming in now for City, if you think of company at City... Exactly. Look like at the players that Gary Neville has just named. Company, Van Dijk. These guys are so important to their teams. Like Van Dijk right now, right? he's been injured for at least, I think, four months now. And Liverpool are on a slump. Like, Liverpool don't even look the same team with, with, uh, without Van Dijk. Same thing with the Man City as well. When, when company left as well, they had to find all sorts of defenders, centre-backs, Nathan Ake, you know, Ruben Diaz, Laporte, all these guys to even try to replace Vincent Company because they know how important he is as a, as a centre-back. Do you think of Vidic at Manchester United with Ferdinand? You think of all the teams that have won the league... That triangle of goalkeeper and two centre backs very is important. solid as a rock. They're dominant. Very important. And this three are not dominant. The keeper's not dominant at the moment, even though I thought he did okay yesterday. The two centre backs, they're not dominant. They concede too many goals. And yeah. if you concede one or more goals per game, you're not going to win. Yeah, Lillard of being bullied by uh, Dian. Is that is, is it is is it Dian um, for uh, West Brom? I, I know that there's a Dian Garner, but there's also a Dian. He's just like a a, a strong. A strong striker, you know, big dude, very physical, you know. Like thing, the thing is with Lindelof, he's not physical, and 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 that's one of his uh, downsides as well because he always gets bullied as well. If someone's stronger than him, like he always just gets bullied as well, and and, and that's one of the key things that um uh, that Osmani fans have been calling out as well that he's not, he's just not being strong enough. Premier League, so Manchester United have to look at that. Which do you fix first? The problem is they're not gonna, they're not gonna, they're not gonna. Uh, Turf Maguire out. They've invested £80 million. Pounds. He's the rock. He's the cornerstone. Played every minute this season. Yeah, played every minute. He's I the agree. one that they're going to build the defence around. Yeah. So what you've got to do is find a partner for him. That's got to be somebody. I actually think it's got to be somebody of the uh, physicality and sort of what would be profile of Bailly, actually. Mm. Someone who's quick, good yep. in the air, strong, yep. can mm -hmm. cover Maguire one-on-one, -on -one, yep. but also he's going to get them up the pitch and allow them to play a little bit exactly, higher. Exactly, Gary. And then you've got to think about the goalkeeping situation. And I think the goalkeeping situation is going to need attending to quite quickly too. Do you agree on the centre-back? Yeah, he's, he's not a physical presence, Lindelof. I mean, I said, I think, uh, on a Monday Night Football when uh, Spurs played Manchester United about two or three years ago and Spurs won. Don't get me wrong. It sounds like I'm, I'm picking on, on, on thingy, on Victor Lindelof. No. Like, like even these guys are, are picking up on uh, on on Victor Lindelof as well. Nope, is the both of them? Maguire as well. He's too slow. Don't think most of the times so he's he cowers too much as well. And whenever things gets tough for him, he starts hiding. So it, it's it's not just Lindelof as well. It's it's literally the both of them. They're both dead defenders, and we need to replace the the both of them. We need to replace the both of them, not just Lindelof. The, the, these guys keep on picking on Lindelof, like that like just because the, he's Swedish and uh, and. And Maguire is 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 English. That's why they're not picking on him. No, 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 no. It's Lindelof and Maguire. That's who's dead. We need to replace both of them. Been Old Trafford. I actually said that night. This lad's not good enough for this level, and he's actually improved from there. I think he had a really tough start. But you actually look at people now. I wasn't the biggest centre back. Really, I'm just on six foot, quite a small centre back, and sometimes it'd be something you would be paranoid about going into a game, but you don't think you can maybe. I, I certainly couldn't compete hugely early. That was almost Sammy Hippie's job, but when you see him in that situation, it's funny because as a defender, you always think that you should be obviously marking the striker, but in some ways, when you're not a huge physical presence or huge in the air, you don't want to get pinned, you don't want the striker to mark you. So when you see him then you're saying about not pushing out, certainly against really tall strikers, like, like a Peter Crouch and things like that, it used to be imperative that you pushed out all the time. And you're almost, as a centre-back, for me, it was like trying to stay away from the attack. I know it sounds strange, but it only come with experience and learning that you're actually, you don't want to actually near you. So you're either really pushing out or really dropping off. You don't actually want to be pinned by him. But you're saying what you can fix first. You can't fix the centre-back to the summer. The next big thing Man United need to do is they need to sort the goalkeeper out. De Gea, so unfortunately, right now is not a goalkeeper to win the league. They have a really good understudy in Henderson. We don't know, is he, is he Manchester United material? That's the thing. That's my question too. You see, with this whole uh, uh, De Gea thing, I've done a video on this and I will release the video. Um, you just have to bear with me. But, right. So, 
literally that's my question like is is Dean Henderson good enough for Man United is he going to do the, have the performances that David De Gea had you know in in his career for Man United as well is it is it that type of guy or the, or again again are they trying to shoe on a, a David De Gea out of here, you know. Leicester, don't forget. Let pe- 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 like people forget this, right? Yeah, yes, it, it's it, it's an an anomaly, an, an but Leicester won the league, right, with uh, Kasper Schmeichel, and De Gea is a better keeper than than Kasper Schmeichel. De Gea won the Premier League before with Vidic and Ferdinand. If you can get a good pairing, right, for De Gea, he 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 will be a, a great goalkeeper too. So it's it, it's it's always not De Gea's fault. It's just because a. Uh, uh, David De Gea, he's got two, well, two useless guys. I'm, I, I, I try not to say he, he's got two dummies right in front of him. That's what always happens, and that's why we're always leaking goals as well because these dudes, like our two centre backs, and, and I'm using air quotes, right? They aren't good enough. So, if, if I was in the position that Manchester United aren't going to win the league, I think they're pretty safe, top four. The, the points ahead, and you know how good a the side they are. If I was only going to Solskjaer, I would at some stage put Henderson in for 10 or 12 games because he need to find out, is this Manchester United's number one for next season? If he's not good enough, they need to go and back. Exactly. He can try that. Exactly. And he, 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 he can try that, right? For me, like, I, I, I'd even say, like, even, not even 10 or 12 games, like, like three or four. I, I, if I was Oli, right, I'll tell Dean Henderson, I'd be like, I'd be like listen, Dean, all right? I'm giving you a chance here. It's a chance. You must grab it with both hands. If you mess up here, lad, you, like you are going to be the second pick, right? You you need you you need to actually prove a point, and you actually need to prove why uh, you want to uh, 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 play for us as well, and why you you should be the starting keeper. A keeper in the summer, so you can't go and buy someone without giving Henderson his head. But without a doubt, they need to get a centre back who's got a bit more physical presence. Because you look at Lindelof, and you think not a centre back, two centre backs, not not a centre back, two centre backs. Kulibali, Kunde, Konate, Varane, Ramos. Just there's a, there's a um, uh, this guy at Inter Milan. Div Rice, Skriniar, all these dudes, Romagnoli, all these dudes available, all better than the two dummies we have. Could bully him. That, unfortunately, he's not the biggest. I want to make a presence. point on Lindelof. Lindelof's problem is Maguire. Maguire's problem is Lindelof. Yeah, exactly. I think that if you put Lindelof alongside Van Dijk at Liverpool and he was his partner, I think he's a fantastic... I think he's a really good player, Lindelof, by the way. I think he understands the game. I think he reads the game. I think. And by the way... M- uh, four years ago, uh, it was Man United, right? They had a choice, uh, and Charlie Austin has actually came out and said because he played with Van Dijk at Southampton, uh, he was spoke he was speaking to Van Dijk and he was like, Virgil, um, uh, so, so what's going on with the situation at, at, at Man United? You, you know what Van Dijk said? He said that yeah, uh, they chose uh, Victor Lindelof over me, like so stupidly. A guy who's actually got Premier League experience, like playing absolutely insane for for Southampton, and and Man United go out and and pick a guy who plays who, who plays for Benfica. You get what I mean? Yes, we we've got in Bruno Ronaldo and Nani and Teles from the Portuguese league, but it's not from Benfica. Like Benfica has rarely given us any good players, even a good player. So why why would just go in there just just get a guy from Benfica when we should just went like literally down south of of, of England. I, I think Southampton is in is in Devon or Dartmoor or I think it's one of those places. But anyway, go like get him and we didn't and we messed it up now and now and now and, and I'm pretty sure right Van Dyke Van Dyke likes Man United. He 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 likes Man United like like I'm, I'm. I guarantee you, this guy, right, grew up, grew up su- supporting Man United. Like he, he's, he, he's even tweeted as well. Like around twenty, like two, two thousand thirteen, um, to how he likes Man United as well. His old tweets have been like put out, um, and and him praising Man United as well. But yeah, we we just run like a circus basically. 
good defender. I think if he was alongside a real Ferdinand or a Van Dijk, I think he'd make a great pair. The problem is he's alongside somebody who isn't the most mobile in Harry Maguire. And I think that's the problem that Lindelof's got, is that actually they've invested £80 million in Harry Maguire, so they're going to need to put someone alongside him. Because I think Lindelof's a really good player. And if Liverpool were looking for a centre-back pair, in, you know, I think he'd do a really good job for Liverpool alongside Van Dijk or get alongside a, a Ferdinand. But the problem is I don't think he does a good job alongside Maguire because they both just sort of just drop back a little bit and you need someone to get up the pitch. They've got to get up the pitch. They've got more front foot. They've got more aggressive. They've got to step past the striker. They've got to have the nerve. I said it a few weeks ago. They've got to have the nerve to make the stomach churn a little bit. That there's a bit too much space in behind them than they'd ordinarily think there would be. And that's what the best teams have. I agree. But yeah, guys, that's been the video. You know, I've I've always wanted to do this video. Um, I was waiting for it to uh, to be uploaded by Sky Sports, obviously, because um, it's it's Monday Night Football, and like for me, uh, my my favorite segments for from the weekend as well is when there's there's there's, there's Monday Night Football because these guys just break down the things as well. And Guy Neville was one of my favorite pundits in football. It's pretty my favorite. Put, put, uh, uh, in football in general as well because he's he just so knowledgeable but yeah this centre-back par uh, partnership does need to be sorted out man in the summer like it's no excuses for the board as well um I, I did make a video like a week and a half ago since since uh, Bayern Munich has signed uh, Dio Upamecano um we should go out there and start acting quick as well because Harry Maguire and Lindelof are not good enough to be my United centre-backs in my opinion we aren't going to win the league uh, we with those guys playing for us in my opinion as well and we do need a CDM too um, and a right winger but you know guys um, if you've got any comments concerns let me know in the comment down below um, and tell me what you think as well to uh, uh, who's going to be in, in our deal centre back for Man United or any like uh, player that you'd like to see at, at Man United I'm speaking about centre backs as well guys um, Aaron Priston speaking about this reacting to this and I'm signing out peace <laughs>